evening rides, sunsets, glossy varnish, I see the snow outside and ask, where did summer go? My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this, the wooden boat experience. I've had a trailer load of old roofing metal that I bought from the Amish for 50 bucks and I've been waiting for a chance to use it. So last Friday, I started insulating and putting up the interior siding. You guys know I like old things. When I get free rain, like in this job, it's fun to do whatever I want. I really like this tool. It works great. Got it at Harbor Freight. I gotta remember to use the tripod. Setting the GoPro on the ladder is not the hot ticket. I think you guys got jostled around there. This backing plate here for the electrical box is an old hatch from our lures um, wooden boat. And I'm putting the metal on with this one gallon can of roofing nails that somebody gave me for free. Imagine my surprise on Sunday morning when I walked by the old Ranger and saw a flat tire. Man, you don't get those very often anymore. And of course it's Sunday during COVID in the middle of nowhere. I'm just gonna do it myself. I'm so used to Speckles, he's just always there and you forget just how patient he is. Now of course two of the lug nuts didn't have their chrome caps because the truck's 32 years old, so it's a different size and it gets stuck on there and oh, you know how it is. It's just one thing after another and it's cold. But eventually... There's the culprit, a small nail. I still had a couple of plugs that I bought back when I lived in my last house. So they were pretty old, but they looked fine. And then I had to get rubber cement out of my bike toolkit. But with just a little bit of work, Bob's your uncle and the tire's fixed. Well, it's about three o'clock and I finally made it out into the boat shed. It is Tuesday, I think. I've been so busy. Got a FedEx package today from John Albert. The best Caesar salad you've ever had with a nice note. It says, Scott, I hope you get as many hours of joy from this as I have from the wooden boat experience. Thank you, John. And I called my daughter Brittany about some business stuff and I told her, about this book and she was having me read it over the phone so um she was very interested i'm gonna read it later i didn't get through the whole thing with her i said Brittany, i'm just gonna have to tell you the highlights and i also got a nice new respirator which i've been needing because my old one which is hanging right here this thing is from i believe 1995 3M. It was still working good, but it's, it's hard to find the cartridges. And as you know, it's been hard to get respirators and protective equipment, but I did get this on Amazon. So this was a big plus. So I'm going to retire this one or keep it around for just in case. Whew, it's only 39 degrees in here and I'm going to get some sanding done. I know I won't be sweating today. That's for sure. I just can't tell you how much it's been killing me the last few weeks not to be out here in this boat shed every day, or at least every other day. It's just been nuts. 
a busy holiday season, so much shipping to do. Sometimes it takes me all day just to get the shipping out. But soon, soon. Well, it got down to 35 in here now, which surprisingly isn't bad if you keep moving. I really like this new respirator. There's still a couple spots that need some fairing compound and I've got to get up on a ladder and sand this area up here. But as I always say, it's getting closer. Eventually I'm just gonna put a coat of primer on it and realize that some of it's gonna have to be done and fared on top of the primer, which is no problem. This thing needs to get flipped over. And I gotta get to the post office. It's starting to really get cold here, so I stopped by the Amish for some new floor insulation. So I've been thinking a lot about the St. Lawrence Skiff, and so is Andy Derby. And he was kind enough to make the long trek back up here to take a look at the skiff with me and figure out a real plan. He even brought me a small bandsaw. Thanks, Andy. So we're wearing masks because we're in the shed together, but I think the audio will work. So let's hear what we figured out. I actually have an intro written. Okay. And in the intro... Well, why don't I just read the intro, yeah, and sure. that'll give you an understanding, sure. and I'll, I'll, have it, I'll have it ready at the same time. Sure, okay. I am in awe of craftspeople who have knowledge of tradition, know th how things have been done, and they use that knowledge in their work. I love talking with people like Andy Derby about these skills and have the best of intentions when I do. I've never been able to follow through all the way. I think it comes from always taking on too much and being so curious about so many things and lately I'm haunted by a constant feeling of time running out. How many more projects are left for me? My approach is more of a stuck on a deserted island with tools and a bit of knowledge and maybe some photos. Knowing just enough to begin and figuring out as I go. So keep this in mind as Andy and I work through a plan for the skiff. Generally we like the same things, hope for good results, but may use different paths to get there. So that's okay. where I'm coming from yep. on this. and. Before you start, I'll just give you what I've been thinking from, sure. from the methods that I do just about everything. If we find that the strakes are in bad enough shape that they can't use them, that basically I'm just taking this boat apart and rebuilding it at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Well, I do. Okay. That, and that's, so maybe that's what you're thinking that's as what well. I'm talking about. In this catalog, they seem to be describing my skiff almost exactly. And you'll notice Andy referring to it several times in this video. I think originally when we were first talking, that's kind of what I was trying to explain a couple months ago, was that, that concept. And then we kind of, you kind of sidestepped over to, well, what if it was bad enough that you wound up just taking measurements and building another boat? Right. Stop, so stop. As I can get up in, you know, I spent some time on the ladder looking and walking around. Yeah, there is a bit of plank replacement, but it's doable. There are planks that are usable, and there are planks that are not usable. Okay, so do we right now go through and we can we can mark, mark some stuff? Sure. Yeah. Keel is is just a simple rabbit. Yeah. Right. Well, it's just a simple, and the garboard is coming into that right. to that rabbit, correct? Right? I mean, simple rabbit. It it changes angles, right, as it goes to each end. Okay. So, part, you know, the beam... Not a, once it, in the center, it's fairly the well, same, but then it changes as it gets here. Huh? Yeah, it changes radically. Right. right. So, here's the beauty of taking the time to get the stations right and get the boat locked into where it needs to be. Because once you got the boat locked into where it needs to be, now you can start being a surgeon. Now you can go in and say, okay, you know what we're going to do next? We're going to have to pull this keel out, which means I have to pull the garbage out because uh -huh. they're bad anyway, all right? Now, the beauty of this boat and part of the reason that I said, hey, let's talk about fixing it instead of making another one is this copper fasten. Easy to pull apart, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not iron fastened, in which case we'd have to rake the whole boat off and build another boat. So you can now, with the boat upside down, 
and basically pulled into position, now it's like you're you're building, you know, now you're working on a planking looking down, you can take that keel out of the boat. You can leave the ends attached. Okay. And what you need to do to get and now you've got the keel that you can use for measurements to make a new keel. Alright? The garbage are out of the way. You've got total access to this keel. Still got the sides of the boat, which are being held, they're they're all being held by your stations. Now you were saying nail them, but would I, I be better I, I, off screwing them? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I should have said tag them. But when I over. if when I do that, and this brings us to another thing, when I remove the garbage and remove this, and it's it's all tied into these stations, I can then get this false stem off of here. Right. And then look at this and say, this is probably going to be steam bent, right? Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. So then I'm making the backbone of the boat, and basically I'm yeah. starting where I would have started if I built a boat anyway. That's right. But I've got help. Yeah, you've got help. And it's it's not quite as linear a, uh, a system, right? You're right. going backwards a bit, you're going forwards a bit. But it's going to help me through the knowledge that I don't have. Right, and you're going to see their construction methods. Seriously looking at this, and, and I know you can't you can't really tell without getting into it, but how many planks do you really think should be reused? You may be able to save a third of them. Okay. You know, which is not bad. And you're gonna to have to make that assessment as you pull them out, you know, kind of. And all of these have to be totally refastened. You right? will, you will work your way from the keel to the shear. Okay, and I'm gonna. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm almost. I'm building a boat. It's just the old boat is behind it. Yeah. And I'm going down and going. Okay, okay this one I can just say this one here. I can just refasten. Clean it up. Make it as clean as possible. Dial it in. Put it back on. Now one thing, just to back up, so we've got our keel out, we've got our two garbage planks out. Yeah, come down this way, Andy. Okay. So we've gone ahead and we've pulled those, and we're now working on the stem, all right? So what you're going to do is you're either going to replace the stem or you're going to reuse the stem. You're going to make that decision when the stems come out, all right? Because before I do all this stuff, besides the garbage, well, these need, those need to be in place at that point, right? The new stuff. When you're building a new boat, you're going to do your keel and your stems first. Right. Okay. Everything comes from the keel and stems. So this is the same thing. So new keel and whatever happens with the stems gets put back together, stop waters, you know, bolted correctly, whatever you decide to do. You've got an opening here. Now look at that. So... All right, the next thing is your new garbards. So the new garbards are going to go in. This is all pulled away. Right. Okay, so your new garbards can go in, and they can be sealed to the keel and fastened. So now you've got a new keel, and your garbards are new. Go back out to the next strake. Pull that and decide what you're going to do. Some of it can be saved save it if some of it needs to be replaced replace it same thing come back in refasten and remember you're always drawing things to your stations whether your temporary screws maybe some wood blocks to back it up whatever you need to do right, right? to keep that shape as you go so a little bit and everything of done in pairs yeah the garb is done in pairs we don't we don't mess with this until these are in place right and then we do both of these and the other thing is you know you're going to seal this to this no, I am putting, when you say seal, I am going to put something between? I'd recommend putting something between. Okay. All right. And not 5200 or no, something no, no. like that. Because Just, that's going to cause problems. Right. You've got to have something that can move a little bit. It's right? going to move, you know, and I wouldn't even be adverse to using bedding compound put on very thin. They used to use thickened varnish. You know, that used to be, sun, especially on bright boats, uh -huh. if a boat's finished bright, then they would stick the laps together with, with thick varnish and nail it off. And, you know, then it just looks like varnish, right? So right. when you're varnishing it, you don't see it. So something like a life cock or something like that. Well, even life cock, you want to make sure it's really thin. And that's, okay. that's the thing. If you use 
oil-based marine bedding compound. All right. It's, it's really, you know, if you can get a new can and try to keep it from seizing up on you, which takes a long time, but anyways, you can spread it very thin. And you're going to make your laps sweet, okay? They're going to they're gonna dry fit nicely. You're not going to have to fill big gaps. So the bedding compound just kind of gives a little added insurance. And you're not looking for a big squeeze out like you no, normally are when you're working on this boat. Not at all. Okay. And then uh, the other thing is, you're only sealing this where it meets this. This stays dry because you're going to do this one next. Right. It's the same thing. It's just always the bottom edge of the plank that gets sealed as you work your way out. So we're clinch nailing all the way down through. Yep. A little bit of bedding compound. And you're doing your pattern in between the ribs, just like this boat was built, right? Your, your laps. And you're leaving the space where the rib is. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And you're working your way... This is up. a lot worse than when you were here last time. Yeah. Well, that's okay. But yeah, see, now that's also because the boat is sagging it's apart, sagging. you see. Yeah. So if the stations were in the boat, she'd pull together better. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Until, until you can get some dimensions working for you, you don't know much. Your eye can tell you a lot, but it can't tell right. you what they wanted. Yeah. Um, you get all the way to the top doing exactly what we're talking about. All right, then you can start putting ribs in the boat. Okay, hold on. Let's a good time to switch. There's one area of the plank down there where there's a pretty bogus knot, right? Oh, right here. Yeah. So the yeah. question is, is the same knot over here? Yep. One, two, four. Yep, it is. All right. Well, then they resawed this one. That's funny, because that is, you're right, that is pretty. Yeah, so they went with the same knot on the other side. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Well, obviously, if you can do it, then yes. But you don't have to do it. Like, if you've got a piece of wood that's going to work for a plank, and you're going to paint the hull, you don't have to say, I can't use that piece of wood because it's not book match from the other side. Okay, so then we're talking about ribs. Mm -hmm. So we've got this hole. At this point, this looks like a boat. It's upside down, it looks like a boat. You wouldn't know that there weren't ribs in it. It's all attached to the stations. It's all yep. clinched off to the laps. And now yep. you're gonna take the whole thing and flip it right side up. Now the stations, are, would, are normally, you would think they'd be between the ribs. They're going to be set. You're going to pick areas for your stations where there's an existing rib. Okay, that's what I was thinking, because now you can use those holes yes. that have the temporary screws yes. can be where you're going to put in your actual fastener. That's correct. Now, here's the thing I've been thinking about. Am I riveting, or with, am I using ropes, or am I just clinching the ribs? I just, this is assume this, this is clinched, clinched, right? Right. I would do the same thing. Okay. All right. I, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work riveting. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a beautiful job, but copper clinch nails done correctly can be very pretty too. Well, the inside of this, the way a skiff is used, the clinch nails seem like they're more practical too. The ribs, the rivets, you have that little piece sticking out, which yep. is going to catch, people yep. are going to hit, so. Yeah, you know, to trim off a rivet and make it pretty is a time-consuming job. Right. So on the outside, this would be varnished, this one here. Yep, the top shear. And, and unfortunately, I think that's going to have to be replaced. Because yeah. if you get up there and look, you notice that pretty much the top of it is gone. Yeah, right. Well, it's going to, by the time you're done, it's pretty much all going to be gone. And that's something you're going to want to pull some measurements on. Before I start taking it apart. Huh? I'd recommend that. It's going to get destroyed, I think. I would try spiling that guy and then, you know, set your pattern aside for when you're, when you're ready. Um, the other thing is, though... I mean, this is cedar, just like the rest of the hull planking, and, and not the not the nicest cedar. Right. So you could, you know, decide to use a little mahogany down That might there be the place for pretty. a beauty board, huh? Right, because you're going to varnish it anyway. So why not? Yeah. You know? you know, the other thing, like, I guess you would be making certain decisions, like, are you going to paint 
the inside of the boat like they did originally, you know. I hope they're not painting the inside. Down. Well, you could keep it varnished from the risers up, I think is what they were saying. So, you know, your seat risers, right? seats go to. I never they're, knew what the name of those were. Everything above that would be varnished. Everything below it would be painted. So Because you're going to put floors in, too. Which could be varnished or right. oiled, depending on what you'd rather do. Yeah. And that gives a nice contrast. And then the paint, you know, you can abuse it more. So, the you know, it's in the bilge, anything like that. If it gets a little dirty or whatever, it's just easier to deal with. And you've got you got to think three, four years down the road, not just what it looks like the first year. Right. And, we, you know, we are sort of doing a restoration on this guy, and that's how this boat would have been built. So when you're all done, you know, you're going to have a restored St. Lawrence skiff, right. probably built in Clayton, you know, and uh, whether it was A. Bain or Spalding St. Lawrence or whoever, um, it's the real deal.